Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to another Wii CS 2 map making guide, courtesy of me again, Ancient Swan, because that's what my name is. So thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something cool in this Wii lesson. As per the title and your deductive reasoning skills, you will probably have figured out by now that this lesson is all about making connections. And as a recluse with the social anxiety of a punched mouse, I'm probably the last one to be giving such advice, but thankfully the connections we're making today are all in game meaning I may still dispense this wisdom from the safety of my own dark, closed-off, secure panic room. So what are we waiting for? Let's get down and let's begin. Welcome to Trowulan. If you've seen the last two map guides, you will recognize this gorgeous piece of artwork as the ancient Indonesian capital. But at the moment, it's still very bare, though we'll fix that soon enough. So, what are outside connections? Kind of self-explanatory, really. They are going to connect our map with the outside world so that we can bring people into our city. Otherwise, how else will we complain about the amount of homeless and traffic? Exactly. Without something to complain about, my life is a meaningless void of nothing. So let's bring those pesky little beggars right in here. Okay, to do this, we are going to want to click the middle button at the bottom of the screen, hover over it, and the gods will let you know that it's called Add Object. So do that, clickety, clickety, click, click. This will bring up another menu on the right of the screen. So there are five types of connections that CS2 recognizes. Four will bring in the people and one will bring in the power to fight the people. Those five connections are road, rail, sea, air and power. Now in that menu at the right of the screen on its left side are a list of filters to help us find what we want. Road and tracks explain themselves, but what about the other ones? Where's my shipping at? Where my planes be? Well, since I've said that, let's begin with those planes, since they're the easiest anyway. So, making sure I have the all filter selected, I'm going to go into the search bar at the top and type the word plane. And boom, look at all those choices. I'm going to choose the first one, airplane outside connections. And I'm going to place quite a few of these. Why? Because have you seen the amount of planes the Games International Airport can have? It's quite a few, so off to the side of the map we go, and I'm very simply just going to click in a place I think is good for my planes to fly their ass into my city. I'm going to do eight of them, two on each side. You can do as many as you like, of course. It's your map. Do whatever makes you happy. Well, duh, what makes me happy is eight. And there we have it, a map that now has some outside connections. Next easiest, as far as I'm concerned, are the shipping routes. They're a little hard to find though, so this time again, click Add Item at the bottom of the screen if you're not already on the menu. Then up to the search bar and type the word Seaway. You'll see three choices come up, a narrow seaway, a medium seaway and a wide seaway. So for the seaways, we have these three choices and I am reliably informed by complete strangers on the internet who may or may not be wrong and may or may not be trustworthy that the differences in seaways are the same as the differences in the roads i.e. a three-lane road can hold more traffic than a one-lane road, which is fine. Thing is though, for the roads you can see that happening. On a three-lane road you can see the vehicles pull alongside or overtake other vehicles. On a three-lane road all three lanes are used very visibly and evidently so, but I've yet to see that on a seaway. I even built myself a custom map with different seaway widths going in different directions. And then I sat all day and built the world's crappiest city on this map for no other reason than to witness this magic of boats overtaking each other or using different invisible lanes on the wider seaway. And you know what? It almost seemed pointless. Sea traffic is never really that heavy enough to deem it necessary. The amount of times that boats might use different invisible lanes and overtake each other was almost zero. Having said all that, you may notice that the devs have used wide seaways in all their maps, and since I assume they know more than me, because I'm a moron who knows very little, I will err on the side of caution and use a wide seaway in this map anyway. It also helps that this river here is wide enough for that seaway, so Let's just future-proof the map a little and use this option. One important thing to remember with seaways is that they are a pain in the ass to get across, and the wider the seaway, the bigger the ass pain becomes. Your bridge crossing will have to be at least 40 meters high, and even then only certain types of road are able to cross. So just keep this in mind when placing a seaway, you still want the player to be able to get across that river when he's building his city. 
especially problematic if that river or seaway is in the middle of the map. Here, though, our river is way to the north, practically touching the border, and so it's not too much of a concern for me here. Not many players are going to be building this far north in this map, but that's just this map and yours will be different. So just bear in mind that you want your map to be as playable as possible and a wide seaway may not be what you want. And yes, I know tunnels exist, but sometimes you want to just see your beautiful big sexy bridge so I'm going to click wide seaway we go to the edge of the playable area at the river click and draw all the way along the river bit by bit until we get to the other side this river is quite simple so it won't take long as I look at this river now I do wonder if I made it a little too wide honestly I drew it a little wider than it is in real life just because I was anticipating this wide seaway but maybe I could have done with making it a little narrower no matter I can fix that and I will Okay, so I've gone over the river now, made it a little narrower and a little less uniform also, but still big enough to accommodate our giant ass shipping lane. Now what? Firstly, while I'm remembering, don't forget to save often. It'll stop you from going crazy and smashing everything in the room if the game should happen to crash. Right, so we've done shipping and planes, but what about trains and automobiles? Unrelated, but I miss John Candy. Anyway, back here in the year 2024, we're going to do some trains. How you do your trains and where you place your train tracks will depend entirely on your map and should be very different from mine. Do you mind bridges or do you want to avoid crossing rivers as often as possible? Do you want the train tracks to be going through your starting square or do you prefer them some way away? If you look at the devs maps and also the vast majority of mine, you will see that train tracks are often placed far away from the starting square. Why? Well, I haven't asked devs for their reasons, but I can tell you mine. As far as I'm concerned, when you play games like these, the player needs a goal to achieve, something to aim for to keep you playing. I want the player to see those train tracks in the distance, and then know that they will have to reach some milestones before they can get to the railway lines. Goals, something to achieve and work towards, are what often make games like this fun. They give you something to aim for and a sense of accomplishment when you get there. That's why I always place my railway tracks outside the starting square, sometimes far, far, far away from it. Where, though? I'm looking at my map, and uh, the choices ain't too great. They can't come from the south, southeast, because there's mountains there. My trains are going to have to come from another direction. There's also the ancient city and its canals in the southwest portion, though, and I really, really don't want to drive any modern infrastructure through there. And so I think for this map, I'm just going to draw a very simple uh, east to west straight railway line. It will bypass the ancient part of Tro Wulan, and I'm going to place it far enough north that the player is going to have to work towards getting there. At this point, I think it's also worthwhile reminding you that unlike CS1, where the connections were set in stone and couldn't be changed, here in CS2, it is possible to create new connections in game whilst building your city. So even if you load a custom map and you are not happy with the connections or the amount of them, you can create new connections simply by dragging your railway or roads to the edge of the map. Did you know you could do that in CS2? Go on and try it, load a city, drag your road to the edge of the map and watch what happens. Boom! Magic, a new connection just got made. So at least in CS2, you don't have to worry too much about getting the connections perfect because if someone ain't happy with the way you've done it, they can always just fix it easily themselves. Naturally, my map is perfect though, so nobody will ever complain, ever. So just like before, it's the Add Object button at the bottom of the screen, then over to the right and click Tracks. A list to select from will appear. At this point, it's important I remind you of something. Do you see how some of those options on the right have little picture icons next to them, and some don't? Well, those options that don't have a picture icon are a little bit buggy and may not work when playing your map. So, it's very important you make sure you click the options which have the little picture icons only. For me now, I'm going to choose the double train track. This one allows the trains to go both ways without smashing into each other and destroying the lives of everyone involved, which is the preferred option. So, same as before, with my object selected, I go over to the edge of the playable area to find a place where I'd like the train to enter the map, and I click the left mouse button as if my life depended on it. You don't have to, you can click it like you just don't care, it is all relative. 
Now for me right here, I'm gonna go down the bottom right first also, and I'm gonna raise the train tracks to be 10 meters off the ground. This is because I can see that my train is going to encounter a river almost immediately on entering the map, and it's just easier if I have my tracks already raised. So, 10 meters high at the edge of my game map, I click and draw. I've got my bridge now across the river, so time to go back down the bottom right, and I'm going to lower it back to zero meter ground level. And I will continue drawing a slope to the ground. At this point, I should probably also say that although the game will allow me to successfully draw a 19 degrees steep slope, I personally don't like it that way. Trains generally don't like that kind of steep slope in real life, and it just looks a bit shitty if you draw one on your map. According to the Lords of Google, trains generally prefer a 2.5% to 4% slope maximum, and actually as low as 1.5% is preferred for freight trains. So that's how we're going to make ours too. So out of Google and back into the game we go, and this time I'm going to draw my slope at something more realistic, something that doesn't give the impression my passengers will be filing complaints if they are lucky enough to get home. This 2.7% slope will do nicely and continue drawing. There are other rivers ahead though, so it'll be the same when we get there, a nice relaxing slope. I will also add that if the rivers are close enough, it's worth just keeping the train raised. No need to lower it for the sake of three meters to just then have to raise the tracks again. One tip I will give here is that if you see a river in the distance that will need bridged, it is easier to go do that first and then draw back from your bridge towards the already laid tracks. I find that often if I just draw towards the river, then try to slope correctly, I often end up making a mistake. Or I find I haven't left enough room for a decent proper gradient, and then I have to delete what I've drawn and do it again. So for that reason, draw your bridge first, and then draw back to your tracks. It's just a bit simpler and avoids having to delete your mistakes. Okay, so now we have our railway line. It's simple enough, and it will do just fine. So what's next? Well... I guess we may as well make some roads, huh? One thing before we do, though, is that I should let you know something else that's quite important. As discussed in earlier videos, the map editor is still very much in beta and many things just don't work as God intended. One of those things are intersections. If you go into the add object menu and type intersections, you will be given a list of pretty junctions to choose from. But, and it's a big but, None of them works in-game as intended, or rather they do work, but uh, they're shit. Why are they shit? Well, if you choose to use one of these pre-made intersections, then when you load the map to build your city, you will find that entire intersection is now locked and unplayable. The entire giant intersection has a footprint outside of its roads, and you're completely unable to build anything on top of that footprint. Not sure what I mean? Yeah, I know, I can't explain for shit, but as if by magic, Here's one I made earlier. This is my Seaways testing map. And uh, when making it, I plopped down this pre-made intersection from the map editor. And you will see that if I try to draw anything onto that footprint, it's marked as red and will not let me do it. This is a bug that I'm sure will one day be fixed. And this advice will then become obsolete. Still though, that will probably be sometime next century. And so in the meantime, it's important you are aware if you do choose to use a pre-made junction, I very, very, very strongly recommend that you do not put it into your map's starting square, otherwise it will be incredibly frustrating for people who play your map to then find out that a good size of that starting square cannot be built on top of. You can get around this in-game by deleting the junction and then plopping a new one. Any junction placed by the player during the game will be fine, but junctions placed in the map editor will be buggy like my one. And so that's why I prefer not to use the editor's pre-made intersections. I prefer to draw my own, and I'll be doing that very soon. So once again, bottom of the screen and select Add Object, and then to the top search bar, where I prefer to type the word Highway, and you will see a ton of options. Same as with the trains, you will see some options do not have a wee picture icon next to them. Do not choose one of those options. Make sure you select something with the icon, because just like before, those are the ones that won't bug out and kill your map. I am going to select the option Highway One Way Two Lanes. Why two lanes? Why not four? Just add one more lane, bro. We all know the meme which has been flogged to death by every single person on Reddit, including me. 
Honestly, if you haven't made the just one more lane joke on Reddit about cities' skylines yet, then who even are you? It is a rite of passage and must be done before playing. So go do that. Go to the Skylines subreddit and tell someone to add just one more lane. Then collect your badge and come back to the game. Okay, done that? Good. Now, I didn't answer my own question above, did I? Why lay two lanes? Well, same as I did with those railway lines off in the distance. I believe that upgrading your road network while you build your city is another one of those goals you will often strive towards. It's part of the fun of playing the game. And so I don't want just go ahead and lay some massive five lane highway for you right at the beginning. I want the player to do that themselves when and if they want to. When I build a map, I very deliberately give the map and its players the very bare bones. I give you enough to start your city, but I'm not gonna play it for you. I want you, the player, to play your own city, to have complete autonomy in how you build your city. And part of that autonomy includes only providing the most basic options, such as this two lane highway, at the start, you, the player, can improve on that once you've saved the cash and earned that achievement. I'm not going to build your city for you. I want your city to be as unique as possible. So you won't see any massive road networks being pre-laid in any of my maps. Okay, so time to lay the road, but where? I really don't want to have only two road connections. It's minimal enough for the train tracks, but I really want more than two connections for roads, especially on a map as open as this. I generally strive to place three highway connections at the very least, preferably four connections if the map allows. So that's what we're going to do here. My first two connections will be simple enough. I'm going to follow along that same west to east portion that has the train tracks. And just like the tracks, I will bridge and slope appropriately. 19% degree slopes may still be possible and allowed by the game, but as mentioned earlier, it looks shit. So we'll make it a bit more realistic. I checked Google again, and the elf that runs it has said highways rarely slope steeper than 8%. I'll do a nice round 5, just because it's easy to remember. Another thing I want to do before I begin drawing is I want to go to the bottom right of the screen, to where it says Parallel Mode, and I will click those two lines that look like a pause button. With this option clicked, the game will now automatically draw a parallel but opposite direction highway. I love this button. In CS1, we had to essentially draw each highway twice, once in each direction, but by the power of Grayskull, we have been given the option in CS2 to have that done for us, which pleases me greatly, so do that. And once you have clicked those two wee lines, a further option will appear to its left, where you can either decrease or increase the parallel roads offset. This is the distance between the two parallel roads. The game presets this to one. This makes me want to slap someone because it's pointless. You will see why if you try to turn your highway into a bridge. Bridges in CS2 cannot have an offset of only one. It will go red and not allow you to draw your bridge. Bridges must have an offset of at least two. And so to avoid any fugly connections when I get to those rivers, I'm just going to plan ahead and set that offset at two. Now, when I draw my bridges and then connect the highway to those bridges, the connections will look much smoother and a lot less shitty. Shitty equals not goody. And here it is, the first section of my highway. It avoids going through the ancient city part by following the same line as my trains. Again, though, your map will be different. Where and how you place your road connections will depend entirely on the specifics of your map. I've drawn two of mine here because that's how I like it. It's not enough, though. Maps with only two road connections are very basic, in my opinion. There definitely needs to be more. Before we get into that though, let's draw our intersection by hand. It is of course more difficult than just using one of the pre-drawn choices. But as already mentioned, those will screw with your game. And until that gets fixed, this is still the more preferable option as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, some folk love drawing roads and intersections. So make this part of your own game. I'll do mine simple enough. No reason to go mental. I'm barely holding on as is. The problem now, of course, is drawing a connection that doesn't look crap. This may take a few attempts, so I guess maybe patience is key also. Still, it's much better here than in CS1, right? I'm not going to lie, the road tools and the ability to draw sexy junctions in CS2 is pretty much the only thing that stopped me from going back to CS1 at the beginning. When this game launched so poorly and lacked the features I wanted, I did often think about going back to CS1 and waiting till this game, CS2, was finally patched and ready for release. But then, 
The thought of having to go back to CS1's roads also kept me here, so it's good that they got that right at least. Now I'm not gonna lie, my junction looks a bit shit, so don't mind me while I stop the recording and just draw it again anyhow. Okay, so what you're looking at now is attempt number four, still not perfect, but it's bloody good enough. This is the one we're going with. One final thing I'm gonna do though, is at those points where the one lane ramps connect to the two lane highway, I'm going to change that part of the highway to a three lane. This will allow traffic to get on and off your highway without obstructing other oncoming traffic. So for this, we go up to the right again, and this time I will select highway, one way, three lanes, then to the bottom right of the screen to those revolving arrows named replace. I select that, and then I go to the parts of the highway that I want to update and I just click it like a little clicking genius. Boom, there are now some appropriate highway lanes for your traffic to merge correctly without killing an entire family. I will add here also that although it worked out fine without problems for me changing the lanes here, there's a chance it might not. There's a chance your third lane might, for example, be obstructed by a pillar from your overpass. But worry not, young Padawan, life will always find a way. So you may need Anarchy turned on to get this bit done. If you don't already have the Anarchy mod, then go get that. It will allow you to place objects, even if the game goes red and tells you it doesn't want to. The link to the Anarchy mod is in the description below. Install it, use it, add that one more lane, bro. Okay, so I've gotten my highway all intersectioned like a madman, and I've drawn it into my starting square, but is that enough? Well... Like I said a little earlier, two road connections are not enough. And so, once again, we come to the challenge part, same as with those far-off railways. I don't know if you've noticed, but the devs maps often include some roads which are connected to the outside, but are not connected to the highway. They are often also not drawn into your starting square. Here is the game's own Great Highlands map. You can see here that at the beginning of the game, some other roads are included for you, but they aren't connected yet. That other outside connection is there, but it's up to you, the player, to choose when to make use of it. Personally, I suspect one of the reasons the devs made it like this is just to avoid the through traffic screwing with your city too early on. But I also reckon it's done like this for the same reason those train lines are so far off. Once again, it provides a goal to aim towards. Especially in my map, because we'll be placing our extra roads outside of the starting square just a little bit off into the distance. So this time, I'm going to choose the highway, two-way, four lanes road because not everything needs to be some super motorway and smaller looking road is fine too. And here at my southeast corner is one place I'd like to bring it in. So just like before, we click at that edge of the playable map, being careful also to make sure we don't still have the parallel roads drawing button selected, we draw our new road. As mentioned though, this time I will not draw it into the starting square. It's just a little way off. I want the player to see it, but to also have to work to get it. And in this map, I've done that twice. Here's another road connection coming from the north and tunneling underneath that river and wide seaway before crossing the train tracks and meeting the highway. Once again, I've left it unconnected. This is the player's job. So have fun connecting all those roads when you build your city. I'll also add now that if you really like to be precise and close to real world, that image overlay mod can be useful. We discussed this mod in the last video, if you remember. It can be a good idea to get a Google Maps image or a screenshot from terraining and use an image overlay to place your highways and roads as close to real life as possible. Here's what mine looks like. And you can see that it has its main roads, including this orange highway, Route 17. You will also see that, that in the real world, this highway goes straight through my ancient city and its canals, which is no bueno for me in this map and that is why I didn't use it here but if it wasn't for this I most likely would have used image overlay to lay my roads it's all up to you though and how you like to do it so we're done then right almost but also no if you do ever wonder what's been done yet and what you've forgotten there is a checklist you can look at top left of screen click map then to the bottom right of screen and scroll down select checklist and scroll down again and now we can see a list of map options we may or may not have finished. We can see what we've done and what we've yet to today. And as far as today's lesson goes, we still have an outside electricity connection to make. You will see also that not everything is essential. Some things are not necessary. You don't need oil if you don't want it to be in your map. And electric connections are also more optional than they are needed. Still though, I like to be thorough. 
and I like my maps to have all the good stuff, so to the add object menu one more time, and this time in the search bar we type the word volt. Now select the high voltage line, and just like before I go to the edge of the playable area to somewhere appropriate, click and then drag that electric connection all the way into my starting square. Electricity isn't really something I want to have off in the distance for you to reach for. This one I will give you right at the beginning. I'm nice like that. And there we have it, a video all about outside connections. That was easy enough, I think, right? We've brought in planes, we're seawayed our way along the Blue River stuff. We've made sure trains will see our city too. We've ensured people with car things can drive in and we've made sure there will be enough electricity to keep the internet running. I think, ladies and gentlemen, that we are connected successfully. I like that. It makes me happy. So we're almost done here. We have two more short lessons to do before we finally publish this map. Next lesson is resources and detailing. So stay tuned for that one. In the meantime, I'm out like a Brussels sprout because I got shit to do and a wife nagging for me to do it. Speaking of a nagging wife, she's just reminded me to remind you to remember to like and subscribe. Always remember to remember not to forget. That's my mantra. Goodbye, ladies and gents. I'm off. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Cheerio.